Um, on uh, streaming services, uh, the Zappa Family Trust has released the first single from the, or the first sort of teaser from the Mother's 1971 box set, and it is a Willie the Pimp. Um, again, instrumental, guitar solo only. It sounds amazing. Like, it sounds really, really good. So, like, if you're interested, either I guess you can buy the download on Zappa.com or check out that on a streaming service. Um, buy it, ideally, but if you can't afford to stream it, it sounds great. So I, I am now even more excited about that release than I was before. But on to this one. Hello, people. My name is Shaggy, the opinionated hippie, scooting over to block that window. Uh, currently ranking and reviewing all the 26 Frank Zappa tours that I'm calling tours. Um, 60s is all one. I split fall 77 and winter 78, and I made some decisions in 73 and 74. But we are now on number nine, spring 74, the 10-year Mothers of Invention, 10-year Mothers tour, as I think it was billed at the time. Um... This tour should probably not be number nine. It should not be this close to number one, probably, only because there were less than two dozen shows, I think 21 total. There's not a lot of tapes or circulating material out there that has been released. Almost my entire opinion of this tour is based on the May 8th show, which I listened to far too much. Um, and then we don't have a lot of stuff officially released from this tour, uh, one of the Beat the Boots uh, in Volume 1, Unmitigated Audacity, is uh, from this tour. Uh, pretty good, pretty good boot. Um, and then uh, the Roxy and Elsewhere album, the Elsewhere material, is from this tour. Uh, namely, Son of Orange County, More Trouble Every Day, and then parts of Penguin in Bondage. Uh, that Penguin in Bondage on there is edited from a whole bunch of different performances. I think three, maybe four. Um, but anyways... This is such a good tour um, and just such a good band and just it sounds absolutely amazing. And I think if you want like my evidence or my my first piece of like argument for why this tour is so amazing, why if like I, I'm pretty much putting this at number nine using the question that Coaster Magic X2 sort of referenced in the comments. If someone were to come to you and say, hey, you can have every single show from a tour and the best quality ever, what tour do you want? This is going to be pretty high on that list because I would love to hear every single show from this tour. Sounds friggin' amazing. Um, who's in the band? Frank Zappa, of course. Um, Tom Fowler is still on bass. He has been there since uh, beginning of 73. George Duke is still on vocals, keyboards, and funk. He has been in and out of Frank's world since doing the Jean-Luc Ponty album back in 69, but he has been in the touring band um, since 73. He and Tom Fowler would be the only ones that were in every single iteration of the 73, 74, and the Bongo Fury band. Um, so they must be responsible for why this is the greatest era of Frank's career. Uh, there is no Ruth Underwood this time out. This is the only tour she was not a part of in this amazing era, though her presence is, you know, in the songwriting and what Frank did is obviously undeniable. Um, Napoleon Murphy Brock, henceforth known as the saxophone flute player, is here and not annoying me as he would by the end of his his touring with Frank. Um, I like, I think he's doing a really good job. There are a lot of old mother songs that are very vocal heavy and I think he does a good job of carrying those without screeching and yelling too much. Um, he is still here. Bruce Fowler is on trombone. He is still around. Um, this would be the last tour for Fowler, the last tour. Oh, uh, Chester Thompson and Ralph Humphrey are still on drums. Thompson joined in the Fall 73 tour. Humphrey's been around in all of 73. This would be Humphrey's last tour. This would be Fowler's last tour in this run. Um, he, uh, he wouldn't be there for the following tour. Um, Simmons would be around for a very short while. Oh, Jeff Simmons is on. I haven't even mentioned that. Jeff Simmons is on guitar and vocals and harmonica which he gets some time to solo in. Um, Simmons would be around for a very, very, very brief while in the following tour, but then leave. Um, but then you have, uh, again, Bruce Fowler on trombone, Walt Fowler on a variety of horns, I'm assuming mostly trumpet, and Don Preston on keyboards and Moog and all kinds of weirdness. And this band just sounds amazing. Um, 
Go listen. It is on YouTube. I just verified this. The 5874 show that I love so much. The opening track is Cosmic Debris. And when that initial da na 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 starts, those horns sound absolutely amazing. There's only three of them, but they just sound, I don't know why, fuller, livelier, more energetic than I think the 88 horn sound. Um, maybe not quite as good as the Petit Wazoo a horn sound, which is yet to make this list. The Petit Wazoo sound may be my favorite, but just the sound of this band. And we're talking, I'm listening to this on some not great quality uh, bootleg or audience recordings. Um, the 5874 is a pretty decent sounding show, but to hear this, if it's out there, and it's got to be because elsewhere shows that there are at least some recordings from this. Um, to hear this in clean sound would be would be ridiculous. Um, so yeah, amazing band. Um, um, uh, the set lists were pretty small. They pretty much played almost the same songs every night, but they were all fantastic. Um, Dupree's Paradise is still here. Um, so you get the you get the Montana into the improv that George leads into Dupree's Paradise. That improv that George leads is just fantastic on this tour pretty long we're talking it's going like 10 15 minutes a time and frank's conducting the band and a lot of stuff is going on the dupree's paradise a lot of people get a chance to solo frank solos in this or we've abandoned that carolina hardcore ecstasy band from the previous tour and frank solos are just kind of his most aggressive dupree's very metallic almost and high energy on this tour um so that is fantastic um there's a lot of guitar playing from Frank. There's a lot of just rhythm guitar from Simmons that provides a little more bulk. The horns are fantastic. People get a chance to solo um, in Cosmic Debris. There's Debris Paradise solos. Uh, Frank gives solos in like the part when he's leading that improv with uh, George. Um, if there's a complaint about this tour, it's that there's just not enough Walt and not enough Bruce and not enough Don. That would be the complaint. They just need more chances to stretch out and more chances, more chances like Frank is doing in like spring 73 where, or even the Petit Wazoo where like, we're just going to make something up. There needed to be more of that. We're just going to make something up attitude, I think. But other than that, a ridiculously fun, high quality, great solos, amazing tour. Here's an example of a typical set list. This is from uh, the... Uh, 51274 show, which is bootlegged on um, Unmitigated Audacity. There is a complete version of this tape circulating out there. Um, but Cosmic Debris, common, show, common song. Uh, everybody gets a chance to solo. Simmons gets a chance to play a harmonica solo. Um, Frank's solos are really high energy. Um, the Pygmy Twilight, Idiot Bastard Son Cheapness Trio is still here. Pygmy Twilight is... A little bit slower, a little bit bulkier, much funkier because of the horns. We're not yet to that sort of proto-metal version that uh, would happen in summer and fall 74, but we're still a little bit more like, a little beefier and not as, dun, 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 not as, not as lively, uh, but still funky because of those horns. Um, the dummy up jam sound a little better. Napoleon is is getting his groove a little more and is able to like, riff and go off with the freedom that he's given here in that little jam. Idiot Bastard Son is always great. And Cheapness is still in that weird between Roxy and between stage two version where it's got little bits of, of both. Not quite as epic as it would be in the following tour. Um, Penguin and Bondage popped up a couple times. Excellent Frank Solo in that. Um, Inca Rhodes is on this tour. Inca Rhodes is now the full Inca Rhodes, we're not starting the song as we do in like the Lost Episodes, the post-solo, um, but we still have that beginning where the song starts off with the dun 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 but that runs all the way through until Frank's solo is done, and so it kind of makes for a very sort of static landscape that doesn't change much in the beginning, um, and I think Frank would fix that. Frank would fix that on the following tour and the song would sort of gel into its epic one-size-fits-all version. Um, and we're not quite there yet, um, but still the solos are still pretty good and Duke's solo at the end is still fantastic um, and all that stuff. Um, so, um, but yeah, it's not the best version of this, but it's still Inca Rhodes. Um, what else do you have on here? Um, you got the Montana... 
uh, George's improv with Frank leading the band through all kinds of crazy stuff, Andrew Dupree's Paradise, a whole bunch of solos in that. This is pretty epic. Um, and then generally this would lead into the Mother's Medley, which was a whole bunch of mother songs that were played kind of aggressively, a lot of guitar. Frank gets a lot of licks in there whenever he can, like at the end of songs, there's sort of like those sort of end of Andy style rave ups on a couple of these. A couple of these songs would only be performed by this band and no other band. So that's a nice little treat. But uh, this run at its fullest would consist of, it can't happen here, Hungry Freaks Daddy. You're probably wondering why I'm here. This was the only band that would play that. How Could I Be Such a Fool? Ain't Got No Heart. I'm Not Satisfied. Wowie Zowie. This was the only plant band that would play Wowie Zowie that I know of. Let's Make the Water Trim Back. Harry, You're a Beast, which was like played at such a ridiculously fast pace. Like these songs just found like, sound like they're just high energy really quick, but it works. It sounds amazing. Oh, no. Uh, Orange County Lumber Truck. Oh, no. Son of Orange County. Trouble Every Day. All the madness that goes with that. I mean, just some of the best sounds and best playing and just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I Words fail me. Um, but anyways, um, and then you got your typical encores. You got a Camarillo Brillo um, was typically an encore number. And it was just fantastic because it wasn't that like, let's play this in under three minutes and get it done with and go into something else. It was like, like funkier Humphreys, like drum beats are like a little more like bringing that like upbeat funk to the song. There's nice little jams at the end with Duke and Frank or pretty sure it's Duke at the end because he did and when Preston wasn't there, so I'm assuming it's Duke, but just really fun. Um, I, and that's like your typical set list and almost the same set list every night, though sometimes things would be moved around. Um, other songs that were played on this tour, there is a tape of the 10-4 show that's incomplete and it includes something that's labeled as the advanced bebop session. That's what the tape trader called it. So I don't know where that comes from, but it sounds like it might be the end of a um, booger man, uh, like the end of a, a George Duke jam, or it might be uh, the end of a don't you ever wash that thing jam that popped up on a tape. There was no Akinna's Arf, but don't you ever wash, don't you ever wash that thing popped up on a tape once. Um, and this might be the end of that. I'm not sure if that Don't You Ever Wash is from another tour and it just got put on this tape or what, but it, I think it's this tour. It sounds like, because you can hear Bruce. Um, but um, in this like advanced bebop session jam, Frank tells Bruce to play Ornithology, Walt to play Giant Steps, Brock to play Little Coquette, and Preston to play Sweet Leilani, and then they do, and it's just beautiful madness like a pure mother's 60s moment of a bunch of musicians playing different songs at the same time just fantastic um andy appears once it sounds more like it's one size fits all version it's frank has smoothed over those transitions that were kind of interesting um on the previous winter 74 tour um what else is played on this tour um, I think I covered everything. Like, again, that was it. That's not many songs, but they all sound great. The band sounds great. Louie Louie, you know, hey, when is there not a Louie Louie? Oh, Montana gets played a couple times, um, a handful of times. So there's a Montana, your typical just Frank solo in that. I think I mentioned Montana already. I don't know why I'm thinking I didn't mention Montana, but I've already mentioned Montana. And Redunzel, Redunzel pops up. And Redunzel is your not yet... Uh, Ruth version because Ruth isn't even on this band so it's pretty much this sort of lost episodes version uh, with a bunch of people getting a chance to solo um, and then that's about it yeah that's all of the songs that were played on this tour and again there are incomplete shows circling around with like one of them has Dynamo Hum on it but I'm pretty sure the Dynamo Hum is not actually from this tour um, I think it's from the following tour but maybe I'm wrong about that um so anyways, correct me if you know, um, but again, this is one of those tours where we really only have, I think of the shows available, there is a version of like an early April show, I think it's the 20th or the 24th, pretty bad sound quality, um, but still you can, you can hear the, the greatness. Um, and then there's a May 1st show that's out there that's pretty good, the May 8th is one of my all-time favorite, and then May 12th, 
there's a complete version out there, and that's also represented in on mit unmitigated audacity, the bootleg on Beat the Boots One. Um, and I'm not going to penalize this tour for introducing uh, can't afford no shoes into the uh, Zappa world. Um, a couple times during Frank's Dupree's solos, he sort of starts playing the riff to can't afford no shoes. The song would then debut on the following tour as Ralphie stuffs his shoes, but we do get the actual riff, I think for the very first time on this tour. And I do not like that song. I think it ruins one size fits all. I was very clear about that in my one size fits all video. Um, but uh, it kind of sounds good. It's just a riff that Frank kind of throws into a solo. And I'm not going to penalize this tour for introducing that into the world. So anyways, yeah, that's about it. There's really not much more to say about this. Um, I am suspecting that there might be a complete show in the vault because Frank did release stuff from did release stuff on elsewhere that sounds pretty fantastic. So this would be, I think, one of the greatest ZFT releases ever. Like I would be so incredibly excited. So if anybody's watching this, I know Travers has watched at least one of these videos. Man, if that's out there, what do we have to wait till? Maybe we have to wait till 2024. Maybe we're going to get like a, a 50 year anniversary of this. And that would be fantastic. I'll wait. I'm waiting. I'm good. Um, so anyways, that's it. Um, um, there have been uh, tapes that have surfaced since I was into tape trading that I've come across from other tours. So if there's anything out there um, and you are f uh, familiar with that sounds really good other than the stuff I've named, let me know because I want to seek that out and get it. Um, I've been out of the... The, the trading loop for a while, but I, I'd like to seek that out. Um, but anyways, that's all I got to say about this door. Uh, fantastic. I love it. And it's pretty much this entire thing is based on one tape, one show that I listen to way too much. So anyways, thanks for watching. Comments below, all that kind of stuff. Peace, y'all. Bye.